So we care about net filtration pressure, the net pressure that is based on hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure, both in and outside of the capillary. Here's our capillary, a simplified section. It receives blood from our arterial. There's the blood coming in and blood is gonna leave going out the venule. So let's look at the pressures that exist in the different portions here. First of all, we're going to have hydrostatic pressure in the capillary. We're gonna have hydrostatic pressure in the interstitial fluid. We're gonna call this zero. It often is close to zero, very low. I'm gonna write millimeters of mercury once to remind you that's the units. I'm not gonna write it for all of these. I don't have room. Hydrostatic pressure in the capillary is 35. This can vary, but these are the numbers I'm gonna use as an example. We then have osmotic pressure in the capillary. That's due to all that protein and red blood cells that can't leave, 25. And we're gonna say osmotic pressure in the interstitial fluid is zero. Okay, I've got a lot of stuff in here. What, what's up with that? Well, let's look at what's gonna move out and in. I'm gonna do outs in pink. Um, this hydrostatic pressure, this is a force out right? Which way is our osmotic pressure? Let's draw this a little thicker here because it's 35. Osmotic pressure is higher inside the capillary than out, but that's going to mean its force is in. So let me, let me do this. This is green. Our pink is hydrostatic pressure. What is the net filtration pressure at this location? It's blue and red. Net filtration pressure is the forces out minus the forces in. I tried to make this simple by having zero in this case. Um, forces out is 35 minus 25 for the forces in. 10 plus 10 millimeters of mercury. Plus 10, that means filtration occurs. The net pressure inside is positive. It's higher than it is outside. As we go down the tube, what changes? Well, hydrostatic pressure is gonna change because we're losing, right? Pressure changes throughout circulation. We're slightly have reduce blood pressure as we um, continue through circulation. So here at the middle, hydrostatic pressure is gonna be 25. So is osmotic pressure. This is going to be a net filtration pressure of zero and no movement. Now, as we Go further, same thing continues. Our blood pressure, hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries is doing, going to decrease even more. Our osmotic pressure basically stays the same. Um, we still have the same amount of stuff in there. That's still 25. Um, I'm gonna draw this one out again with my lovely arrows. So now our hydrostatic pressure out, I'm trying to draw a little bit smaller. It's less than our osmotic pressure, which is still the same. So this here was 25, this here is 25, but this was 35, this was 18. Arrows are not to scale how they should be. So what's our net filtration prep pressure here at the venous end? Forces out minus forces in equals minus seven millimeters of mercury. What does that mean? The, the forces in are stronger. There is more force going in. So that's reabsorption. Net pressure is in. Over here, the net pressure was out. Beautiful, huh? Ah, lovely. Let's do a learning check.
calculate net filtration pressure, would filtration or reabsorption occur? Choose a different color here and I will answer this for you. I'm gonna answer this one, but the next one I won't. Okay, net filtration pressure equals forces out minus the forces in. In other words, hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries plus osmotic pressure in the interstitial fluid. You may not have written all this out, but um, I'm doing it for you. Minus osmotic pressure in the capillaries plus hydrostatic pressure in the interstitial fluid. All forces out, it says F, minus all forces in. Well, you may have said, okay, we have zeros here. So why are you doing this, Dr. Robin? It's really just 35 plus zero. You may not have put that. Minus 26 plus zero. Nine millimeters of mercury filtration. Right? Okay, oops, here we go. Next one. Here, you gotta think a little harder because look, that's not zero. So I'm gonna, I'll write out the answer here. I'm not gonna walk through the same level of detail. You use that same equation, all forces out minus all forces in, HPC plus OPIF. I, I can't say the, the numbers. Go back and look at the last slide. You need the equation. Otherwise, you should be able to figure them out from these arrows, right? The arrows are pointing the direction that they are. So this is going to equal 17 plus one, that hydrostatic pressure that exists in the inner, I'm sorry, that osmotic pressure that exists in the interstitial fluid is helping to pull out, it's a force out, minus zero plus 26. negative number is reabsorption. Hope we're good. Here is another just sunny summary of this. Um, at the arterial end, you've got filtration. This is a common pressure. In reality, it's going to start higher and the net filtration pressure is going to decrease until it gets to zero, right? Um, the, and this is what's happening, right? The capillary pressure, the osmotic pressure in the capillary is greater than the osmotic pressure. That's gonna result in filtration. No movement at the center here because the two are equal and opposing forces. They're always opposing forces. Here they're equal. Then we've got reabsorption when we have um, that blood pressure drop, capillary pressure is now lower than the pull in from osmotic pressure. These things can be um, altered some in dysfunction. I'll talk about that briefly when we get to the lymphatic system.